Good afternoon, everybody. Nice to see you. Uh, welcome. Oh. This is the Portland City Council. We're meeting in a regular council meeting this evening. It's Monday, March 6th, five o'clock. Uh, welcome to people in the chambers. Welcome to people who are with us on Zoom. And um, uh, we'll begin our meeting. So we're gonna officially start the meeting. Will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll? Councilor Fournier? Here. Councilor Rodriguez? Here. Councilor Dion? Here. Councilor Ali? Councilor Zaro? Here. Councilor Chavarro? Here. Councilor Pelletier? Here. Councilor Phillips? Here. Mayor Snyder? Here. The next item on our agenda this evening is the five o'clock public comment period on non agenda items. So anybody in council chambers or with us on Zoom who would like to address the council, we welcome you. Um, we just ask that you don't talk about something that's on tonight's agenda. Please give us your first and last name and either the neighborhood you live in or the organization that you represent. You'll get three minutes on the clock and we appreciate you being here. And it looks like we've got somebody with us in council chambers. So go ahead and start us off, please. Hi, my name is Jay Gruber. I live in District 2 in the West End, and I've worked for Shalom House since 2018, and I'm here to share news about the unionization efforts led by Shalom House Workers United. Shalom House provides an array of community-based mental health services throughout Portland. A large portion of our services are staffed residential treatment programs, including group homes, supported apartments, and supported housing. Direct support workers in these programs provide some of the most critical mental health care in our community, supporting clients every day, which impacts the overall health of our community in Portland. For most staff, doing this work is a calling, but now we need support from our community. Workers at Shalom House are attempting to unionize to secure a fair and livable wage, improve workplace safety, and have a voice in decision making that will improve our clients' well being. However, Shalom House Workers United is facing harsh opposition from the organization's administration. The administration has sent out emails and posters with misleading and intimidating messages. They have scheduled mandatory meetings this week for full-time staff about unionization. Managers have held anti-union one-on-ones with workers, and the administration has attempted to require the election be held only in person at headquarters on a single afternoon, which would exclude workers who have multiple jobs or are scheduled at 24 hour programs. Shalom House is largely funded by grants and public reimbursements, and these funds should be used for programs and client care, not for union busting. Other nonprofits have unionized and seen their services improve as a result. Also, in contrast to the administration's actions, other nonprofits have modeled neutrality. For example, Planned Parenthood agreed to neutrality for their union election, and Maine ACLU voluntarily recognized their union, their workers' union. Using staff time for mandatory anti-union meetings and agency resources on a union avoidance lawyer is creating a hostile environment for employees and needs to stop. I'm asking that city councilors contact Shalom House administration and board members to let them know that this behavior is unacceptable and a waste of resources. Other members of the public are encouraged to show their support as well. Please go to tinyurl.com backslash support SHWU to send your message to leadership in support of Shalom House Workers United. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we'll head over to Zoom for our next public comment. So just a reminder to please give us your first and last name, neighborhood you live in in Portland or the organization that you represent. And first we'll go to Richard. Yeah, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, great, okay. Richard Ward, Parkside neighborhood, District 2. Free speech, white supremacy. I am however grateful that due to so many sharing the photo of the banner that my message has reached more than I ever could in person. Social media has come out of the woodwork to support the message that yes, it is okay to be white. One podcaster alone received over 1.5 million views on Twitter with 99% of the comments standing with free speech over social justice warriors hurt feelings. 
All races of people came together to condemn your anti-white propaganda. WGME has to keep taking down comments and re-uploading the same news articles to push the narrative that city councilors are the victims while actively attacking free speech. It's okay to be white and to constantly bash white people and blame us for your problems. That's one of you, are race-baiting hypocrites. The real racists in this city are you. You'd never call a BLM gathering in the city an act of hate or boo-hoo for the cameras. When criminals vandalized our city and attacked police officers, you went silent. Police officers were assaulted with urine, rocks, and fireworks without anywhere near as much care. If members are really receiving hateful emails, they brought it upon themselves for lying and slurring white people. A FOIA request has not turned up any threats made towards city councilors. Prove it and release the emails. I condemn violent threats and would encourage you to, do, to demand an investigation into who sent the so-called threats. Without a police report, it leads me to believe that these threats were never made or were made by yourselves. You can't play a victim when you spout anti-white hate. Councillor Fournier has said she wants to create an environment where white supremacy doesn't feel safe enough to be in public and loud. With the city deeming it okay to be white as a white supremacy slogan, I'm going to take that as a city, city councillor wanting violence towards her political opposition. When did it become acceptable for city councillors to start calling for silencing private citizens? With seeing the response, it is obvious that leftists don't believe it's okay to be white, and it's a message that needs to be seen more often. Not a single person of color could bother to attend City Hall to speak out against it. It was a crowd of angry, self-loathing white people. Thank you for the inspiration to keep my head up and demand an end of racist hate. Thankfully, we are a free country that protects our right to the speech and self-defense. I will not be intimidated. My rights trump your feelings. You will never stop me from peacefully standing up. I'll never quit. I'll never surrender. I'll never give up. Next commenter, please. Anybody else in chambers who would like to address the city council, come ahead and step forward, please. Good evening, council. My name is Grace Nichols. I live right here on Casco Street. And the reason I'm here this evening is on behalf of the Fossil Fuel Non-Proliferation Treaty, which is an international effort led by the nations of Vanuatu and Tuvalu, um, both nations which are expected to lose land to climate change in the near future, um, to, to complement <clears throat> the Paris Agreement and the most recent COP27 Agreement, but which do not mention coal, oil, or gas, and fill that fundamental gap to call for the, to stop fossil fuels at source everywhere, non-proliferation, to phase out existing fossil fuel reserves in line with the 1.5 degrees Celsius pathway and to support a global equitable transition to renewable energy. So this is a zero fiscal impact resolution. And we'd be joining cities all over the world, um, including um, my, my previous hometown of Albany County, New York, um, but also Vancouver, Hawaii, a lot of different um, cities. And 76 Nobel laureates have all signed on. And the idea is to... Um, set a leadership for taking some necessary steps like ending fossil fuel subsidies around the world in order to really get online to a clean energy transition. So I know Maine supports these causes and I think it would be lovely if Portland, Maine would sign on to the resolution. So, what I, so this is not on the agenda for tonight, but what I did was I brought six packets of the information with a model resolution and all the reasons why it's a great idea. And so I was hoping to hand those to you guys and have you think about it. My name and my email are up on front, so you can contact me if you're interested in um, sponsoring or endorsing it. And, um, and then I'm a law student and there's several law students who also support this. So if we can get um, sponsorship for the resolution, we'd be happy to bring some people here to support it and uh, have different voices be heard. So thank you very much for listening tonight and I hope to be speaking with you in the future. Thank you, Grace. And our uh, interim city manager is gonna grab your papers from you. Thank you for bringing those and we appreciate your comment. Okay, I will head back over to Zoom for the next public comment. I have somebody on named Tom Dillian. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, my name's Tom Dillian. Uh, I'm in District 4. I've been a resident of Portland for almost 50 years. Uh, I, I've been hearing a lot of stuff lately, um, disturbing things about Portland, 
Um, there's a lot of accusations at city council that there's a lot of members. <clears throat> there's a lot of members that are socialists or communists and it's disturbing. I've never done a, a, a city council meeting. And they told me that if I came on, they, I would watch uh, city councilors not stand for the American flag. And I told them that there was no way that was possible. And, and I came on and my, my daughter showed me, and uh, I don't even know what to say right now. Oh. I, I watched them not stand. What is happening to our city? Everyone is sending me videos of stuff that's happening in Wyndham schools. Uh, you saying that uh, it's not not okay to be white, that uh, you won't stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, I don't even know what's going on in the city anymore. Uh, if you guys aren't socialists, would you at least make a comment and say you denounce socialism or communism? My my father fought in, in the North Korea in the Korean War. Uh, that's that's all. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Is there anybody else in council chambers who would like to offer public comment on items that are not on tonight's agenda? Okay, I don't see any. I've got a hand up on Zoom from George Rowe. Uh, George Rowe, uh, Hanover Street. Um, I had uh, made a request to the council to uh, do a motion to reconsider the North Deering Park uh, approval last week. Um, the basis for that uh, has to do, and you did it with the Munjoy Hill Historic District, um, uh, it's one of the kind of the bigger items that you've done it over the years. Um, so the, the procedure is very familiar to you. But um, the reason is, uh, you know, last week's discussion was really, you know, in no way, shape or form uh, enough for this city to get comfort that this transaction is on the up and up. Um, you know, for example, uh, the Trust for Public Land was able to basically do a property propaganda video in the middle of that that had absolutely nothing to do with this transaction, absolutely nothing to do with um, its specific work in Portland over the over the recent uh, you know decade or so. Um, but I also included in that request to you, I included an email that had two video links. One was to the Land Bank Commission meeting on December 9th, twenty twenty. It was kind of the genesis. Uh, of this whole transaction. And in that video, Simon Rucker, who a member of the, the Land Bank Commission, uh, basically admitted that he was uh, proposing this transaction as a favor to his friends. He was, he was wanting uh, public money to be used to assist friends of his. And that uh, may not be a direct financial conflict. It is certainly the appearance of a conflict. And it set off because he was basically the, the project lead for the Land Bank Commission on this project. He spent an enormous amount of time queuing it up and sending it off to Greg Mitchell and other people in the city administration who pursued it. And that conflict was never made known uh, to you, I don't think, explicitly, or to anyone else in the public who didn't have the benefit of being at that meeting, which, by the way, that meeting video was not available to the public until fairly recently. And then the second video was the one public meeting that the city of Portland and the Trust for Public Land had about this transaction. It was the literally over two and a half years, the only time that the public was invited to weigh in on this idea. 30 second warning. And there were no uh, renters invited or present. There were nobody there that was supposed to be the low income disadvantaged members of our community who were supposed to primarily benefit from this transaction. And so those two videos just help put a pin on why you should be mo uh, doing a motion to reconsider this evening. And you should be postponing action on this proposal until there can be more public discussion. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. 
Okay, I have, uh, I don't, is there anybody in council chambers who would like to step forward? I don't think I see any, any, any action in chambers. So we'll head uh, over to Zoom again. Um, somebody named Alex Jones. Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you. All right. My name is Harry Johnson, District 3. I want to say why did the mayor turn public comments off last week before giving anyone the chance to speak? There was about 50 of us bastards on Zoom. And within 10 seconds, that bitch turned off public. Okay. Thank you for public comment on items and not on tonight's agenda. I will close public comment at this point in time and we will move on in our agenda. I did wanna draw attention to the fact that Councillor Ali is with us this evening, but he's on the attendee side and he's joined us by phone, which, oh, oh wait, maybe we got him. Anyway, I just wanted to let folks know that Jessica is working with Councillor Ali to try to get him over to the uh, panelist side. Um, we don't see him at the moment, but I think he's on his way. Okay, are there any announcements from my colleagues on the council this evening? Okay, seeing none, and I have none, we will close announcements and move to the approval of the minutes from our previous meeting. Can I please have a motion to approve the minutes from our February 27th council meeting? Move passage. Second. Councilor Zara with a second from Councilor Dion. Is there any council discussion on those draft minutes? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and vote to approve them. Councilor Fournier? Yes. Councilor Rodriguez? Yes. Councilor Dion? Yes. Councilor Ali? Uh, Jessica, if you're with us and you can let Councilor Ali um, speak, then he can go ahead and vote on this item. Looks like you're available to speak, Councilor Ali. The wonders of Zoom. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Okay, we'll keep trying. Okay. Councilor Zaro? Yes. Councilor Trevaro? Yes. Councilor Pelletier? Yes. Councilor Phillips? Yes. Mayor Snyder? Yes. Those minutes are passed unanimously. Will the, the next item on our agenda is Proclamation 14. Will the clerk please read Proclamation 14? Proclamation 14, 22, 23, recognizing March as Women's History Month, sponsored by Kate Snyder, Mayor. Uh, so we have a proclamation before us this evening recognizing the month of March as Women's History Month. Whereas women of all races, classes, ethnic backgrounds, and beliefs have made historic contributions to the growth, economic vitality, and overall quality of life in the city of Portland, and whereas throughout the history of our city, and despite a history of hardship, exclusion, and discrimination, women have strived and sacrificed for equity and equality to ensure that the daughters of Portland have the same opportunities as our sons. And whereas despite their numerous contributions, and as described in a 2020 report issued by Maine's Permanent Commission on the Status of Women, Maine women still disproportionately struggle for economic security, experience domestic and sexual violence, lack access to health care. And whereas throughout history and still today, Portland women have led and lead endeavors to create a more fair and just society for all. And whereas for the first time in the city of, for the first time in the history of the city of Portland, a majority of the members of the 2023 city council are women. Helping the body better represent the needs and priorities of the population and now therefore be it now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Kate Snyder, Mayor of the City of Portland, Maine, and the members of the Portland City Council do hereby recognize March 1st through 31st as Women's History Month. So that is signed and sealed this sixth day of March 2023. Thank you. That's it for proclamations this evening. Uh, we do have um, a communication. Will the clerk please read communication 26? Communication 26, 22, 23, updating permitting and inspection rules by Jessica Hanscom, Director of Permitting and Inspe Inspections. And I'll look to the city manager. I think we've got, we have Jessica here with us tonight. Correct, there she is, Director Hanscom. Please take it away. Good evening, Council. Jessica Hanscom, the Director of Permitting and Inspections. So we've just updated our outdoor dining on public property rules to include a rule that we've uh, consistently had throughout the years that you can't cook on public property. And then we formalize the rules for the parklet program. The, when the parklet program was created in 2017 and 18, 
the rules were all just listed on the application and we never actually made a set of rules separate from the application process. So we did that this year. Those are the two updates. They both will be uploaded to our website for anyone that has any questions. And I'm happy to answer anything that anyone has. Thank you so much for being here with us this evening, Director Hanscom. And we have two, um, uh, two resources available in our packet tonight, which reflect the updates that um, the director just told us about. Does anybody have any questions or comments with regard to these updates? Councillor Phillips. The only question that I have is under the, is it called the parklet? Um, it says that um, a restaurant can use their parking lot, or their parking spaces right in front of their restaurant in order to use that for outdoor dining. But it doesn't say how many lot, how many spaces they can use. Does that make sense? So how many how many parking spaces can a restaurant use in front of their space? Is it four? Is it ten? The ordinance specifically states they can have one or two spaces. So they it depends on how much frontage they have in front of the restaurant, what they have for occupancy in the restaurant will depend on how many spaces they can have. But the max is two spaces. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Any other questions or comments from the council on this communication? Okay, again, thank you, Director Hanscom. And we have no more questions on that front. We're heading into orders. Will the clerk please read order 145? Order 145, 22, 23, setting a public hearing on citizen initiative regarding an act to improve tenant protection sponsored by Ashley Brand, city clerk. Uh, thank you so much. And so I think I'm going right back to you, Ashley, for a little uh, heads up on, on this, or are we going to Corp Council for the setting of the public hearing? I think this one's just pretty straightforward. It's just setting the uh, public hearing date, which will be at our next meeting, and then we'll be able to take um, public comment and the overview of it. Okay, thank you. So again, this is straightforward. The item before us tonight is not on the content of the initiative, rather the setting of the public hearing so that we can make sure people uh, know when we will be um, uh, offering that public hearing opportunity. So I'm gonna ask if there's any public comment on this item before I come back to the council for a motion. George, uh, I have a hand up from George Rowe. Uh, George Rowe, uh, West Bayside. Um, so in terms of setting this uh, particular date, um, you have the distinct advantage of only having one referendum uh, fortunately to be wrestling with. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of people find uh, these meetings to be inconvenient. Uh, it's still technically winter. So Monday nights um, are not always great times. And there's also uh, a lot happening at, I think, your next um, council meeting. So uh, what I was going to propose, uh, since there are some pretty high stakes with this referendum, as there almost always is with a referendum uh, from somebody's point of view, um, is uh, to hold a special meeting uh, just for the purpose of uh, giving the public an opportunity to weigh in. And, you know, as with any uh, public notice, uh, people may or may not take advantage of the opportunity. But to me, this is, uh, I mean, you've had some pretty light meetings over the last year. Um, I would say this is the least hardest working council in, in a long time in terms of your, the way that you've been using your meetings. Um, but occasionally you have long ones and the public really does never benefits from, you know, long evenings where there's lots and lots of different competing uh, people trying to get your attention to focus on something. And so to me, this is absolutely a right issue uh, because there's probably going to be a fair amount of money spent by the landlord uh, interest groups to pass this. Um, and there's some merit in what they're doing, uh, you know, uh, in terms of looking at a lot of rent control regimes across across the country and over time. But um, the main thing is that uh, one side of this, uh, renters um, are not well organized, do not have a well funded interest group, and are not likely to be able to, you know, probably uh, have much of a rebuttal campaign. And so 
creating a special meeting night or a special meeting afternoon on like a Saturday, which is not crazy or unheard of. I don't think it's illegal for you guys to have a city special city council meeting on a weekend, allows a, a few hours of our community's time to be spent solely focused on this and let people show up, you know, for, against, whatever. Uh, often, you know, even asking you to just pass it outright and so morning. we can re then return to uh, another <laughs> city council proceeding to uh, to maybe hash out either future amendments or, or uh, adjustments. So that's uh, that's where I would love to see some leadership and some creativity. Um, I think it basically only serves your interest to have this be a scrum match in a busy city council meeting in a couple of weeks. Um, I don't think it benefits the public. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Is there any other public comment on setting a hearing on the citizen initiative um, regarding an act to improve tenant protections? Seeing none, I will close public comment. I'm gonna come back to the council for a motion. Move passage. Second, Councillor Zaro with a second from Councillor Fournier. And we now have a motion in front of us. Again, what we're talking about tonight is setting the hearing date so that we get that on the schedule and that we um, uh, make notice of that hearing date. Uh, so I ask if there's any um, council comment or discussion on this matter. Councilor Fournier. Thank you, just a quick question on um, the timing of the hearing. Does it have to be our next council meeting or does it have to be a certain number of days before the election just so we kind of understand the time frame in which this public hearing could happen. Thank you. I think there's multiple considerations. So I'm going to look both to Corporation Council and the City Clerk. Um, uh, just a, a quick response. It's, it does have to be held within um, 30 days of today. So an, anytime between now and April 5th. Any considerations with regard to timing of the ballot? Uh, probably not. Ballots have to be ordered in. Ballots would have to be ordered in uh, April in order to receive them um, 30 days before the election. So we'd need to receive them in May so that we can start absentee voting. There was a, a tight timeline for, for this to get the petitions back in and, and turned back around so that we could have public hearing and whatnot. Thank you. Council Rodriguez. Thank you. And just to follow up to that, and does, does the public hearing have to be part of a council overall meeting, or can there be a standalone um, time for the public hearing to, to take place, much like Mr. Rowe suggested? Yeah, I don't know of any reason why you, if the council chose to do so, have a special meeting mm -hmm. on a separate date, as long as it happens within that, within that time frame. but that's a decision for the council to make. Appreciate it. For, just because I asked the question, I'll just say, in my personal opinion, you know, any day of the week, any time of the day is going to present barriers to certain people. I think that today's um, both, you know, labor force doesn't have your traditional nine to five schedule. Um, so we don't have like that, you know, framing to kind of follow. Um, I do think that there are certain things that we can do, much like we've put in place in here, like the hybrid meetings that allow, you know, virtual participation and things like that. Um, and again, as Mr. Rook said, you know, the expectation is not that we fill the room with everyone. These things, uh, regardless of our efforts, um, are simply going to have limitations um, for people to attend. But um, do appreciate the clarity. And I'm, as Mr. Rook's intention was, we're all aware now of, of what the options are. But I think holding it on the date that the agenda suggests in the first read is fine with me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other comments? I, I too appreciate the public comment. It's always good to get thinking creatively about what the options are. Um, as my colleague said, there's always a challenge, uh, no matter what day of the week or time of day. And I do hope that having this remote access opportunity allows people to zoom in, call in and give their feedback. There's a predictability to Mondays for people. They know it's a council meeting night. They know the time of the council meeting. People can write us ahead of time for sure. We take public comment through um, written emails. Um, 
And, and those can be sent anytime and included in the backup so the community can actually see people's input if they can't do it in real time. So I like, um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I will vote in support of this this evening because again, I think there's a predictability, there's been notice, there will be further notice so that we can make people aware that we'll be having this hearing. Um, I, for me to set a date on a Saturday feels like that would be very confusing um, to people. So I'm inclined to stick with our, our, our precedent here. Um, we've usually gotten quite a good turnout and I expect we will again. Okie doke, I think we're ready to go ahead and vote on order 145. Councilor Fournier? Yes. Councilor Rodriguez? Yes. Councilor Dion? Yes. Councilor Ali? Yes. Councilor Zaro? Yes. Councilor Trevorrow? Yes. Councilor Pelletier? Yes. Councilor Phillips? Yes. And Mayor Snyder? Yes. Uh, thank you, that passes unanimously. Will the clerk please read order 146? Order 146, 22, 23, approving the purchase and sale agreement between 144 4th Street, Oz LLC in Portland regarding uh, Tam Street property sponsored by the Housing and Economic Development Committee. Councilor Pius L.E. Chair. Uh, thank you so much. And coming out of the HEDC committee, we've got Councilor Ali here with us this evening. If you'd like to um, provide some context, Councilor Ali, we'd be happy to hear from you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, I think, I don't know if uh, Mary Davis is with us today. Uh, I do see her with us on Zoom, yes. So Mary uh, will speak to this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mayor, if I may. I, I'd also um, mentioned to Mary earlier that I'm happy to, to jump in with a brief introduction and then uh, People have questions. Mary is here as well. Okay, okay, wonderful. So if you're if you're ready to do that, we'll be happy to hear from you. Sure. Um, this uh, this is a um, uh, and Mary, feel free to jump in at any time if you if you feel I cut you short there. Um, this is a, a purchase and sale agreement for remaining uh, city owned property down on Thames Street. Um, it's been uh, in the works for for uh, quite a while. Um, uh, but we finally have a uh, a final purchase and sale agreement that's been approved by the um, Housing and Economic Development Committee uh, at its last meeting um, unanimously. Um, and the uh, the long and short of it is uh, this is it's a, a, a parcel uh, currently owned by the city, the last remaining lot. It's a it's a um, uh, a surface parking lot right now. Uh, operated by the city, um, it uh, the, the city issued a, a request for uh, proposals to uh, purchase and develop um, the, the lot uh, back in 2021. Uh, we received one um, proposal from 144 4th Street OZ LLC. Um, a copy of the request for proposals and the proposal um, are included in the backup materials. Um, the, uh, the, the sale of the property would bring uh, $1.15 million uh, to the city, including a cash contribution for public restrooms, um, some additional parking spaces, five additional parking spaces um, under an agreement that we already have with an affiliate of uh, the purchaser. Um, uh, it would also, um, the, the, uh, the purchaser would also um, uh, convey to the city uh, Freedom Way, which is the um, the block of uh, a land that's currently a private street um, connecting uh, Thames Street to um, uh, to Fourth Street, um, and uh, we'll also be um, uh, being granted two substantial pedestrian, public pedestrian, and utility easements. Uh, that run east, west, and north, south between Hancock and the Connector Road, and between Fourth Street and Thames Street. Um, the what else can I tell you? I think that sums up the big picture items. Um, but I'm happy to take questions. And Mary, if you think I've missed something important, oh, I, I would go through just the um, uh, the various values that are addressed in the memorandum that was included in the backup. Um, just specifically that the the, uh, the property sale price one point one million dollars. The value of the connector road that's going to be conveyed to the city um, is at uh, one point two million dollars. Um, uh, I, I 
cash contribution of $30,000 is included in the purchase price um, to, uh, to help cover cost of a connector road sidewalk. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, $50,000 toward a public restroom. Um, the easements that I mentioned earlier, uh, which are valued at um, 300,000 or over 300,000. Uh, and then the five additional parking spaces for four years valued at 43,000. So total value to the city of 2.69 million. Um, I think that about sums it up and I'm happy to take questions okay. or defer to Mary. Okay, Mary, would you like to add anything else at this time or? Um, the only thing I would point out is in the attachment in the backup, the purchase and sale attachment, page 25 and page 32 have um, uh, diagrams that show the uh, parcel that is um, being sold. Okay, thank you for that reference. So what we'll do is we will take public comment on this item and I'll come back to the council for some discussion. So is there anybody in council chambers who would like to address the council on order 146? Okay, I don't see any. I'm looking for hands on Zoom. If anybody would like to provide public comment on 146, go ahead, George, George Rowe. Uh, George Rowe, West Bayside. Um, so a couple of quick, uh, questions just about the materials in front of you. Um, when is the likely estimate of when this public bathroom will be open and operational for the public? Just kind of curious about that. I'm also wondering, uh, there was some attention paid to trying to preserve a once uh, thought important corridor, um, basically a, a ghost paper street, um, bringing Montfort Street down all the way to Thames Street. And my question there is, if I am a disabled person, either in a wheelchair or just otherwise, you know, not able-bodied enough to negotiate stairs, how do I make available uh, or make use of that pedestrian corridor slash easement? I, I know it's a uh, kind of hard to describe exactly what's going on there. How does that benefit me as a, not somebody who can negotiate stairs? Um, I also just wanted to, uh, besides the couple of those questions, I wanted to just ask about the values are a little bit strange and I don't see an appraisal in the packet. So I don't know if that was uh, included at any point along the way. Um, it's weird, sometimes public transactions have appraisals that are public and sometimes they kind of keep them under wraps. But, um, you know, property has skyrocketed uh, since this transaction initially, uh, I think was proposed and kind of conceived in the RFP. Um, you know, you can go all over the place on the peninsula and see some crazy numbers. Um, I know like Barbara Vestal and Ned Chester, who, you know, hated to see anything happen in the Eastern waterfront, like they just sold a building on 22 O'Brien Street for like 1.3 million back uh, a while back, like a year ago or so. And that was like a little parking lot and like a six unit, like triple decker. And that went for 1.3 million. This is a much, much bigger piece of land. And we're saying that it, it only would have been $3 million for this choice property. It just seems a little bit strange. And I also just wanted to note that, um, you know, I, I just wish that, morning. you know, these transactions are difficult, but the city knows how to sell land uh, and ask for a lot of conditions when it wants to. And it doesn't seem to want to do that on any public open space land in other parts of the city. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Any additional public comment on order 146? Seeing none, I will close public comment on order 146 and I'm gonna come back to the council and ask for a motion, please. So moved. Second. Councilor Ali with a second from Councilor Rodriguez. Okay, I wanna open it up for council discussion. Councilor Zaro. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I have a few questions. Uh, public comment alluded to one of them already. Uh, I remember when this came before HEDC uh, when I was on it last year, um, and I had a few questions then that I'm going to re reiterate now. I think I'll start with the most recent one, though, um, that Mr. Rowe asked. 
Uh, but we we did sell an abutting piece of land in 2017. It was a 1.1 acres for I think 3.3 million dollars. Um, and now it's what six years later. Uh, and this is just shy of an acre. Thank you, Corporation Council, for explaining kind of the the larger package of the sale that got us closer to that 2.699. Um, but I, I didn't see an appraisal either. And, and in this market, it, that is very competitive. I'm, I'm curious um, if we can uh, get a little bit closer to how we landed at this number, because it, it does feel uh, low, quite frankly. Thank you. If I may, yeah, I would, I would defer to Mary. Mary, I don't know if you've got a, if you have that information. Uh, yes. I'm just pulling up some information now, there was an appraisal that was done in April of 2021 on the property. Um, and it has a value range of between 3.9 and $4.1 million. And I think the value of the property and the um, uh, contributions that the uh, developers proposed to or proposed and agreed to make to um, public access. Um, that was part of the um, consideration in the total um, value to the city um, and the, reflected in the purchase price of the property. Thank you, Mary. Uh, so that would, that would assign that value at around one and a half million dollars, the difference uh, for looking at the 2.699. Um, I'm curious, I remember talking about this last year to a point, but why, why isn't there a housing component on this parcel? Mary, I'm going to, I know that was, I imagine that was covered in committee work. So I'm going to first look to you. Yeah. Um, I would really have to go back and take a look at it because at the time, um, this was not a project that I was working on and my memory doesn't, isn't serving me well tonight um, for that issue. I know the area around there is um, uh, in that uh, essential area we, where we're talking about um, has a lot of commercial buildings around it, um, but um, I would need to go back in and look at um, the committee work to um, know specifically why housing wasn't included there. Thank you. Yeah, I, th I think that would be for me pretty pretty helpful. I know right across the street there is housing, uh, and I know in the 2015 master plan. Um, that may not have been present. Uh, um, my last question, and then I'll, I'll take a break and let my colleagues uh, dive in. Is this the last remaining parcel of this size on the waterfront? And I'll let whoever wants it to take, take that in question. I'm, I, I'm, I know you'd looked at me, Mayor. I, I, I don't know that I could say with any certainty if that's true or not. Um, uh, it's, it's the last uh, city-owned um, property that's owned down um, in that area, but I don't know if it's the, uh, the largest available one. Thank you for clarifying. That's, that was my, I meant city-owned, so thank you for clarifying that for me. Um, thank you. Those are my only questions for now. Uh, Councillor Zara, you, you've got me thinking, so I'm going to jump in with a question. I know that this issue has straddled various council years and even leadership and staff with regard to economic development. So we've had some staff changes, we've had some council changes, and I'm I'm going to direct my question to Mary on this one. I'm wondering, Mary, um, if if you if if there's an opportunity to look deeply into the issue of housing on this parcel, um, if more time would help in that realm. Um, I can quickly find it, but probably not for the meeting tonight. So um, I know that we've been working on this for quite some time, um, and the developer is is anxious to move it forward. Um, but I don't know that um, 
if we had a, a short delay just to gather that information, if that would be um, a problem. I don't see why it would be. Michael can correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I think that would that would be okay. Um, I would I, just in response to to uh, to your uh, questions, Mayor, and to Councillor Zaro's questions about the housing. I, I'll I will say that um, the this was the only proposal that the city received, um, and it, it, it the proposal was for a um, you know for a multi tenant commercial office building. There's there's no there hasn't been any proposal. Um, from anyone, as far as I know, um, certainly we didn't receive one um, that included uh, housing. It was always just a a, a commercial um, a commercial uh, building, and and that was the um, uh, the proposal that was that the committee had encouraged uh, the city to move forward with in terms of negotiating the purchase and sale agreement. Thank you. That's helpful information. This is sorry, it's a response to an RFP, Councillor Dion. I have a couple of questions. Corporation Council, how much time have you spent negotiating this purchase and sale agreement? Um, sometimes one of the benefits of working for the city is not having to keep track of billable hours, uh, but um, a lot. I, it, it's it's been um, there have been there have been some delays on on both sides in terms of this sort of lying dormant uh, for for. Uh, you know, a couple of weeks here and there, um, but it has been. Um, uh, I it would really be hard for me to to um, to estimate it, but it's a complex process with oh. multiple easements and um, mm -hmm. and multiple sort of side agreements, and it's taken a long time. I wasn't looking for the hours. <laughs> I really wasn't. I'm just saying, how many weeks has this been going on? Uh, it's it, it's been going on for probably. I mean, the negotiations have been going on for over a year. Okay, and how long did it lay on the table on committee mm. before it came up? Uh, I, I would say it was several months. I just want to make an observation, Mayor. I mean, I think we have a, a responsibility to the business community or any party that looks to engage. In a business transaction with the city to have some predictability and consistency. You know, this issue has been present before the committee. It's been worked on by Corporation Council. We knew about that at the last meeting. I just, I will vote against any delay. I, I think the other party is entitled to see the deal resolved in the good faith that it was negotiated by Corporation Council. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Dion. I, I I agree. I think that it's been in front of this group for a, a while. We've had uh, we've we have a, a unanimous vote four zero from the committee. But I also really respect the questions from my colleagues with regard to options and you know all of the all of the factors that we want to think about. And I, I I did want to acknowledge the change and the transitions that have happened um, when issues take a while, as this one has. We straddle um, council years and committees and that kind of thing. So um, I appreciate the, the comments and the questions and the conversation. Is there any other counselor who would like to weigh in or ask a question at this point in time? Councilor Fournier. Thank you. I, it's a pretty robust packet and I remember vaguely when this came up in AGDC. Um, so what I was trying to find and uh, to Councilor Zaro's point is kind of the difference between the value of what this is and what we're getting in exchange for the monies that are being paid. And that isn't clear to me, I guess, in the purchase and sale agreement, just that seems to be a pretty big discount for some parking spaces and maybe a potential right away. And maybe I'm misunderstanding it, but I I feel like I wanna make sure we're not giving the store away for um, you know a deal just because it's taken a little bit longer of a time. And so I don't know if Mary or Corporation Council have that within this purchase and sale agreement that kind of outlines those different prices. I've looked through this a number of times and I haven't seen that clearly outlined. So also to the public's point where they charge us with making sure we understand what we're agreeing to. I just wanna make sure that that's outlined. Thank you. So I think that question would be directed to Mary. Or is there a specific outline in the purchase and sale um, 
we do, we do have that um, summary that was provided in the memorandum uh, that Corporation Council outlined, but any additional information, Mary, that you'd want to share? Um, the, um, I want to first go back to the original RFP, and there were some specific requirements that were included in that RFP um, for any proposals that came in. And um, the um, the issues around parking, the connector roads, um, the public rights of way, those were all um, key goals within the RFP. Um, so that could that could have been accomplished in a couple of different ways. Um, the city could have just sold the property and uh, used the proceeds of the sale to make those investments. Um, that might have uh, impacted what type of development could have been done in those areas, um, or um, as what ha what happened with the proposal that's in front of you, um, we looked at uh, what were the city goals and priorities for this property, um, how best could we meet those goals, and negotiated with the developer to um, to come to an agreement. Um, to the point of how long have we been talking about this? It's been um, months worth of work that encompasses um, several departments. And so we've had input from public works and planning um, all around what would these uh, rights of way and road work look like? How could we get um, the best possible benefit for the city? Um, and so um, with that in mind, I'm uh, switching back over to the purchase and sale. And I don't know that those specific um, numbers and that transaction is written into the purchase and sale in any one particular place or an easy place to um, point to. Uh, but the, um, the attachments to the purchase and sale outline the work that is the responsibility of the developer um, where that work is located, um, and they are taking on the cost or bearing the cost to do that work. So I, I, unless Michael can correct me, I don't think there's any one place where we can point to those exact dollar numbers um, being referenced in the purchase and sale agreement, but the uh, work associated with it is referenced in the attachments um, to the purchase and sale. Uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, Mary. Councillor Fournier, is, are you all set with that? Yep, go ahead. Just one other question. Um, based on their um, RFP that they submitted, I know, I think it was in 2021 when that came in, and the estimated taxes were 170000 I just wanted to know, is that consistent now, or has that changed at all? Um, I don't have the answer to that. Um, we did not update that number. Thank you. The assessed value of the property. Councillor Zaro. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Why did I turn that off? Um, <clears throat> I appreciate the questions uh, following up. I just want to be clear that I am certainly not advocating for a postponement on this at all. Um, I agree that, you know, this is a process and continuity is important for both the you know, business community and, and residents of Portland. For me, and I want to be careful because I cannot remember when I was on a GDC last session if this conversation was in public or an executive session, so I won't go into details, but I will say that I recall advocating for a housing component on this, even though it was outside of the context of the master plan for the waterfront because lots changed since 2015 to 2020, then 2022, um, and it, it feels incongruent. I mean, we have massive vacant office spaces uh, and, and, and a housing shortage. And I just think about our council goals and I think about uh, what we keep saying we need to do. So um, I don't think this is a bad deal uh, in that it came up from where it was. I think it was at $840,000 last year. So there have been some concessions. I really do appreciate city staff for working on it. I, I get it. I know how much you put into it. That's certainly not my issue. My, my issue is, and this, it might just be me. I might be the only one, I'm fine with that. 
I just don't feel comfortable saying that we're checking the boxes of, of going after our, our council goals this year specific to housing and, and being okay with um, more commercial office space. It's, it's nothing personal. It's just the situation that I think we're in right now. Um, I know we can't force people to build housing on lots that we sell them. Uh, um, we can certainly incentivize it. Uh, so I just want to be clear. I'm not trying to postpone anything. I think tonight we do have an obligation to our community to vote on this. Um, but I, uh, I think that it's a missed opportunity, um, even though um, I understand the waterfront has been developed in a very specific lens and a lot of work did go into it. Um, this for me, isn't it? Uh, so if, if I could have my way, we would keep working and find someone who does want to build housing here or a combination of housing and office space and figure out parking and, and easements and infrastructure with the abutting road. And I understand that is a, a tall request, but um, these are difficult decisions that we, we have to be making. So I just, I just wanted to clarify it for the record. That's where I'm coming from. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. <clears throat> So I'll jump in with a question. Um, we, we are looking within the package we've got before us tonight um, at a net revenue of about 1.15 million um, from the deal. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn to either corporation council or the city manager, I think, to talk us through the council's role in having a say about that revenue. Is there an opportunity for this council to contemplate investment in, for example, our housing trust fund as it relates to revenues that we see coming in from this deal? Um, I think the next step after this, if you were to approve this deal tonight, would be um, an order that would appropriate those funds. And so that order would direct those funds to specific areas. Um, obviously, staff would provide you with a recommendation that we would um, you know, propose that you that you consider, uh, but you guys have the ability, I believe, to to appropriate those funds to the place that you think they would be best used. Thank you. That's helpful. Corporation Council. Thank you. It was just one. I wanted to to just draw the council's attention to one other point that I don't know if it if it's clear. I think it's it's in the materials, but I know there's a lot of materials there, which is that the um, I know that the uh, acceptance of the connector road um, as a city street is an important piece of of the the plan for that area, and I just want to make sure that it's clear to everybody that the developer currently owns the you know the the section of that between the property that we own and um and fourth street and so um as the council considers whether or not to approve this i think it's important just to keep that in the balance that in order to to get title to that um, um to the the property that would be the that would make that connection um, we'd need to move forward with um, with this agreement. So, okay, thank you for that clarification. Uh, I see a hand up on Zoom from Councillor Ali. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Actually, that was the question I was going to ask. Uh, uh, what I was the City Manager or Corporation Council? So, Corporation Council have uh, answered that about that connector road in between because I know this thing has been. Uh, I think I've been the longest person on this specific committee and we've deal with this back and forth and a couple of uh, uh, um, executive session on this item. So, so the question that I was going to ask is already been answered by Corporation Council, which is the, that connector road. I am aware of that. Okay, thank you, Councillor Ali. Next, I go to Councillor Dion. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to return to Councillor Zaro's commentary. I appreciate his effort to reframe his position. In doing so, I don't disagree with anything you've had to say. I think housing is a priority. My concern, and you use the word consistency, and I think that's important, is it's incumbent on us to make decisions as to the timing of such a request for housing. I think if it's front loaded at the RFP juncture, that makes sense. Then our potential partners know going in. If I want a commercial tower, 35% of it, has to be residential. I have no problem with that. I stand with you. I think in the future, that would be an appropriate posture for this council and its, and its committees to take in evaluating a development proposal. That makes sense. I, I always am reluctant to uh, approve add-ons 
for lack of a better term this evening, to uh, anticipated projects and what they're going to look like and what we're negotiating for in trying to settle that transaction. That's all. 11th hour, I tend to want to reject those instinctively. Okay, so, but moving forward, um, as I said, I'm in concert with you in terms of we've got to be a little bit more intentional and affirmative about securing housing space in any development that moves forward in the city. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Zaro. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm going to stop standing because I'm just getting my work cut in. Councillor Diane, you and I agree. Uh, I don't. I I think we are on, we are aligned on this. The one thing I will add though is I did ask for the RFP to include housing when I was on HEDC. I was very clear about it. I wasn't comfortable with this then, and so that has remained consistent. I'm still uncomfortable with it because I asked for it. Um, I understand we only received one uh, one response. And that's just that's just what it is. But I just I just want to be clear about that as well. One last question: um, the bathroom, fifty thousand allocation for the for the public restroom. That leads me to believe that we are responsible for the maintenance of that. Can we just get clarification on that? Mm -hmm. That would be correct. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate the conversation. I'm looking on Zoom to see if Councillor Ali has a hand up. Not at this point. Um, always good to have this conversation, I think, and, and share things across uh, the dais. So I appreciate um, the dialogue this evening. I think we are ready to go ahead and vote to approve Order 146. Councillor Fournier? Yes. Councillor Rodriguez? Yes. Councillor Dion? Yes. Councillor Ali? Yes. Councillor Zaro? No. Councilor Javaro? Yes. Councilor Pelletier? Yes. Councilor Phillips? Yes. Mayor Snyder? Yes. Order 146 passes eight to one. Thank you, everybody. The last items on our agenda this evening are first read, so I'm gonna ask the clerk to please read this, the following um, items, which are again, first reads, Order 147, 48, and 49. Order 147, 22, 23, authorizing general obligation bonds to finance a portion of the city city's fiscal year 2020 for capital improvement program in an amount not to exceed 17,455,000 sponsored by the finance committee. Order 148, 22, 23, appropriating bond proceeds and other funds in the amount not to exceed 24,530,000 for the city's fiscal year 2024 capital improvement program sponsored by the finance committee. And order 149, 22, 23, amendment to zoning map regarding IM-B, industrial moderate impact on industrial way sponsored by the planning board. Thank you. So these items will be on our next meeting agenda. So our next regular meeting of the council is uh, Monday, March 20th. So we'll see those and take action on those in a couple of weeks. Um, between now and then, we do have two workshops scheduled for the 13th. Um, uh, and so, of course, we invite um, the public to uh, watch and um, engage in those workshops with us. Um, one is having to do with the um, budget. The other is having to do with clean elections. So we'll see one another in chambers next week on Monday. We'll see each other the following Monday. We'll see each other the following Monday. Um, but for now, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Councillor Ali, a second from Councillor Rodriguez. Councillor Fournier? Yes. Councillor Bradford, yes? Yes. Councillor Dion? Yes. Councillor Ali? Yes. Councillor Zaro? Yes. Councillor Javaro? Yes. Councillor Pelletier? Yes. Councillor Phillips? Yes. Mayor Snyder? Yes. Thank you, everybody. We are adjourned. <laughs>